Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will take a look on the first thing you need to do when you start a fresh Next.js project for the first time, which is initializing the project with the Create Next App tool. So we will learn how to create a project with the Create Next App tool, what all the different options in the wizard do, how to start and run your development server, and how to build your project so you can run it in a production environment. So if you are totally new to Next.js, this video is for you because these are the first steps you need to take when you create Next.js project. And even if you have used Next.js already, I think it's super important to understand uh, what you can do with the different options that the wizard gives you. So without further ado, let's jump into the terminal and get started. Okay, so here I have my terminal open and just a side note here, you need node version 18.17 or later in order to use the Create Next app tool. So how to use the tool? You can use npx or in my case I like to use yarn. So I'm gonna type in yarn create next app and then give the app a name. And in this case I'm gonna say my test app like this. And then hit enter and then we are prompted with our first question which is would you like to use TypeScript? So if you want to use TypeScript instead of uh, JavaScript, you can select it here and this wizard will automatically set up TypeScript for your Next.js application and you don't have to do any configuration for that and it will work out of the box. Personally, I like to use TypeScript for bigger projects and projects that I know will be maintained and run in production. But if I'm just playing around or doing some demo, I like to use JS. But just now let's select yes and hit enter. Next question is, uh, do we want to use ESLint? So same as with TypeScript, if we want to use ESLint, uh, we can select it here and this wizard will automatically set up everything for us. So it works out of the box. So I'm gonna select yes. Then it asks us if we want to use Tailwind CSS. So Tailwind CSS is one way to style our Next.js applications. There are other ways too, uh, but if we want to use Tailwind CSS, we can select it here and again, it will set up it automatically so we can use it uh, when our application is set up. So for this, I'm gonna select yes. Then uh, do we want to use the SRC directory? So if we want to put our code in an SRC folder, we can select it here. Otherwise it will be just put to the root of our project. Personally, I like to use the SRC folder. It just makes everything look and feel clearer and better structured. So I'm gonna select yes. Then we are prompted with the question, do we want to use the app router? So a little backstory. So Next.js has two routers, pages router and app router. And the app router is the latest version, so I recommend choosing it. And as you can see over here, uh, this CLI tool is also recommending it. And I use it for all my new projects. But if you wish to use the pages router, you can also select it over here. But uh, generally, I use the pages router only on a project that it is already used. So whenever I create a new project and I want to start fresh, I'm using the app router. And a side note here, you can use them uh, simultaneously. So you can have routes in app router and in pages router. But for this, let's select the app router. Then we are asked if we want to customize the default import alias. So by providing a value for this, we can set up an import alias for our application code root folder. So let's add a value here and I'll show you what, I, what it means in practice once we have our project set up. So I'm gonna select yes, and then it asks which alias we want to use. So I'm gonna use my awesome app like this, and I'm gonna add the slash and asterisk sign after that. And hit enter. And after a few seconds, it's finished with the setup, and we have now our application set up. So let's open that up in VS Code. So right away, we can see that we have the SRC folder right here. And it's here because we selected in the uh, wizard that we want to use the SRC folder. So if we would have chosen no for that, this uh, app folder and everything else would be just here in the root folder. So as I said, I like to use the SRC folder because it makes the uh, 
uh, application structure just so much cleaner. And inside of the SRC folder, we have this app folder, which is there because we use the app router. So Next.js uses file system based routing. And when we use the app router, all the routes will be uh, put inside the app folder. If we chose the pages router in the wizard, uh, here would be a pages folder instead of the app folder. And inside the app folder, we have this page file, which is the front page of our application. So in the wizard, I said that I'm going to explain the import alias stuff once we got our project set up. So let's see how that works now. So what I'm going to do is create a components folder inside of our SRC folder. And then add a component inside of it like this. And then I'm going to export a component from here like this. So we are just displaying a hello world text. So now if we wanted to use the hello component on this page, we first need to import it from the components folder. So let's do that like this. So we are going one folder up, then to the components folder and then uh, the hello component. But since we defined the import alias, we can now use that instead of trying to figure out how many uh, folders we need to go up and which folder we are in. So instead of importing it like so, we can import it like this. So import hello to from and now here we want to input the import alias we said and that was my awesome app. Then slash components and slash hello like this. So this my awesome app now references to the uh, root folder, the SRC folder over here. And we can see in this case, it's actually uh, longer to type it like this. And it's pretty easy to import it, import the hello component to this uh, page over here. But imagine if we were like a couple of folders or a couple of routes deep, and we need to import it over there. So this syntax is much easier because it right away gets us to the uh, root folder. And we can from there, just start to import the components. So let me take this first one away and rename this to hello. Now, if I just add it over here, let me just clear everything else and add the hello like so and save it. So now we are displaying this hello component uh, by importing it with the import alias over here. So next, let's actually see how to run our code. So let's fire up the dev server. And to do that, I'm going to open up my terminal. We can start our dev server with the dev command. So if you are using npm, you can use npm run dev or with yarn, we can use yarn dev like this and press enter. And after that, our development server is starting up and it's in localhost 3000. So let's go and see what it looks like. And there it is our development server is running and we get our hello component over there. And now if we wanted to make changes to our code, we can do it right here. So I'm going to add a couple of exclamation marks and save it. And we have the hot reloading working. So the uh, page is right away updated and we can see the changes. So this is how you run your application with the dev server. And that is of course something you should do when you are developing. But sometimes you want to try out how your app runs in production like environment. And to test this on our local machine, we can build the application and then start it in production mode. So let's see how to do just that. So I'm going to stop the dev server and then we want to build our application. And to do that, we can use the build command. So yarn build like this and let's let it run. OK, looks like the build was successful. So now we can start it by using yarn start. And again, if you're using npm, you can use npm run start like this. And this now takes the build application and runs it on a local server. So it is not the development server, but it runs the production build on the local server. OK, so let's open up the localhost 3000 and we can see our application running over there. And the noteworthy thing here is, as I said, that this is not using the dev server. So for example, if we open up our code and made some modifications over here and let's save it, they won't be displayed here because we are running the build application with our server. So this is not hot reloading or rebuilding this uh, code or application, but rather just 
uh, running the build application on the local server. So now you have your Next.js application set up and you are ready to start building. I really hope you found this video at least somewhat helpful. And if you did, please hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel for more Next.js content.